You know what I feel in this house tonight? I feel the security of God's love first. Then secondly, I'm just overwhelmed. Sister Brewster, of the love of God that I feel among God's people. I just feel the love among God's family. And I feel like I could tell you my darkest secret, you'd still love me. I feel like I could be just as painfully honest and vulnerable with you. And you might hate me for a minute, but you'll come back around and you would love me at the end of the day. There's such a strength in knowing, first of all, that knowing God's love is everlasting. But understanding that if our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost, and if, and if we are the ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ, then we can find strength in being connected to the family of God. How many of you have ever gone through a time in your life that you felt disconnected? You felt just remote, uh, obscure from the commonwealth of God. Is anybody here willing to raise your hand? I mean, seriously, you just went through a dry spell in your life or you went through a dry spot in your relationship with God. And then when the, the, the main relationship in your life was, was out of sync, it seemed like other relationships in your life were, were out of balance. I do believe this. I'm a firm believer in this, that when we keep Jesus Christ in that top relationship in our life, when we keep it first and we make it the main thing and keep the main thing the main thing, all other secondary relationships just tend to work out. So I'm very thankful for that. I see Brother Sister Young back from a sabbatical to St. Louis. We're happy to have you home. Thanks for being here tonight. God bless you, lovely young. I feel like I just need to acknowledge everybody tonight. I don't know what the deal is. I, I'm just overwhelmed at the Spirit of the Lord that I feel in this house tonight. We're going to turn to Mark chapter 12 tonight. Read a couple of scriptures, verse 30 and 31 in Mark's gospel. And uh, I have so enjoyed the series on love, the power of love. And we will reach our, our, our uh, finale on this just next week. And we are thankful for the great things that have transpired. We're also very happy for our starting point classes and the success of those classes, and we'll have the opportunity to see the uh, the fruit of our labor and starting point, seeing new people come to the Lord, repenting, be baptized in Jesus' name, and uh, being filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm so excited for that. I want to turn your attention, if we could, to chapter 12 of Mark, verse 30 and 31. And the scripture says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Now, it must be incredibly important to serve as the first or the most paramount of commandments. I dare say that if there were a central theme in the New Testament that should be, that should be noted, and observed and should be committed to, it would be that one verse of scripture. Let's read it again. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength. Can someone say amen? amen. This is the first commandment. Now, the second, verse 31, and the second is like, namely this, in other words, the second is almost just like it and just as important, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Heavens. In my Bible, that's in red letter edition. That was the words of Jesus Christ. He was saying that there's nothing more important. There's nothing greater than this, that we love our neighbor like ourselves, that we love God with all that we have, that we love our neighbor as we love ourselves. He said, there is none other commandment greater than these. Did you notice, if you'll look on screen, you know, God's word is full of hidden riches. It says, there is none other commandment, singular, 
greater than these, plural. Have you noted that before? It could have just as easily said, there are no other commandments, plural, greater than these, plural. But it says there is none other commandment. So the Lord ties both of these together in power and authority and how strong we should observe them. Then he separates them in the end by saying, than these. Think of that. So he doesn't really place one so much above the other. They're equally as important. Now, we know this. To love the Lord, our God, with all of our, our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, and all of our strength, that takes a lot of effort. That's going to require a great deal of us. Your whole heart, your whole mind, your soul and your strength. I mean, there's nothing else left to expend upon anything else. And to love our neighbor as ourselves. That's the hard part. It's not hard to love God. I find it so easy to love him. We sing a song that says that. It's so easy to love him because he's wonderful. He's counselor. He's mighty. He's the everlasting father, the prince of peace. It's easy to love them. But to love one another sometimes comes much harder. And we think sometimes at a much higher price. So I want to just talk about this for the next few moments. The power of love conquers all. It conquers every aspect of our lives. In living for God, we're going to find those who are easy to love. Then we're going to find those that are a challenge. No one's looking around. I get it. <laughs> Loving God and one another are the most important things to God. We see it right here. Not only our love for God, but love for one another is the hallmark of Christianity. Jesus Christ himself went on to say, By this shall all men know that you're my followers, or my believers, or my disciples, by the love you have one to another. I've said it before, but I want to display it again. Patrick, would you help me with, with a simple uh, with a simple demonstration? No, 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 no. Demonstration. <laughs> okay. A simple demonstration. I can have, no. <laughs> I can have this water for Patrick all day. It is so good. Old, tasty, wonderful. Woo, I wish you had some. I got it for you. I, I got this water for you. Kind of like the love I got for you. All right. By this shall all men know you. You're my disciple by the love you have for one another. But you can hang on to this as long as you want to. But that isn't what the scripture says, Brother Young. By this shall all men know you're my disciple by the love that you have one to another. Yeah, right. Until I give him that. Right. <laughs> and, <laughs> and release it. I never really gave it to him. It was never, it was always for him. But it was never imparted to him. Whew. What's that? No, that's this week's water. Don't you? <laughs> Thank you, Pat. No, to be fair with you, we can have something for somebody a long time, but until we give it to them, they can't possess it. They might even desire what is for them, but until we impart it and, and not just give it to them, it, I can't. I can't even be. Indi uh, 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 I mean, uh, politically correct and say an Indian giver. Did I just say that? Oh, I'm sorry. You can't be a... What would I say? A Native American giver? Take backer? You just got to release it, man. You got to let it, let it go. That's the key right there. Is anybody going to sing it? Yeah. So 
let it go. That's a truth. <laughs> I saw on Facebook today a lady said if Walt Disney was alive today, she'd shoot him. <laughs> She said she'd been locked in her house for three days with snow four feet up high, and she'd been locked in there with a, with, with a six-year-old little girl singing, let it go. Do you want to be a snowman? Let it go, let it go. She said, I'd like to let her go. <laughs> Woo! Sometimes love is hard to show. Many times the cords of our love are tested. Can somebody say Amen. Friends are most often the hardest to love because we feel like, you know what? We can always make another friend. And then sometimes we just have this conditional love. I love you if you love me. You don't love me, go straight to the store. <laughs> go to Walmart, same place. <laughs> You want to get away with murder? Just tell somebody go to Walmart. <laughs> Works for me. Friends are most often the, yo, know, the, the the hardest to love because we think we can always make another friend. Yeah. But now family members are different. You can choose your friends, but somehow God, in some form of poetic justice, against humanity has planted seeds in our family who have come up to be a friend that you can't shake. When blood is thicker than water and you wish it weren't. When you got to love your family. Ugh. I know how you feel. Everybody in here has got that crazy person in their family. <laughs> We're filming this or I'll tell you about it. <laughs> Always got that crazy person. That person that comes over at Christmas or Thanksgiving and you just pray the whole time that they don't do the crazy <laughs> while they're there. And they don't flip out and go crazy on other people at the meeting. We used to have family reunions in our family until they just started becoming a raid. What went over, didn't it? <laughs> well, Brian, you have a lot of experience being a police officer. We're going to call on you today to ask you a question. Have you ever gone over to break up a domestic disturbance where the, the man was abusing the wife terribly and, and and she was probably looked like she'd been 15 rounds with Iron Mike. You go in there to step between her and the guy that's been whooping the fire out of her and suddenly she's the one who called the police. She's the one who got you out there. She's the one on the exasperated 911 call said, he's killing me, you better get out here. <laughs> All right, and then when you show up to do your job, you find out that blood is thicker than water. Have you ever had to have more trouble with the person who made the call than the person you were there to serve or to service? The wife is more trouble. Have you ever had a wife try to attack or try to keep you from being a police officer when you needed to be one? You shake your head like that's the truth. You've been called bad names by uh, somebody who, <laughs> have you? I'm just asking. <laughs> I mean, I know you and I know how easy it would be, so I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm just cutting up. Would anyone want to? Call me a bad name? Would anyone want to? <laughs> yeah. You're here tonight. You can step up. So let, let me, but you got there and found out it was, it, you was having to fight the lady more than the man. Strange twist of fate. Strange twist of fate. Family. You got to love your family. Now, I want you to hear me say it. Some of y'all struggling with it right now. I'm seeing it. 
You got to love your family. You know what? If you win everybody else in the world, you don't win your family. If everybody else in the world goes to heaven and your whole family is lost, what have we accomplished? We've got to have the love of God. We got to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, strength, all those things. But then we got to love our neighbor. And that means everybody we come in contact with. You say, well, who's my neighbor? That's everybody we come in contact with. Because last time I checked, we all live on one planet, all breathe the same air. We all have much the same, uh, I don't care whether you're rich or poor, you, 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 you have, can have the same maladies, the same ailments. You use the same language often if you're from the same place. You communicate the same way. These are our brothers and sisters. That's often in a communal way, we call each other brother this or sister that. I love our family. I love our family. Love is a river that runs deep, very passionate. And thing, many things are said and done through the power of love. You'll find that in the river that runs with God's love, you'll find that the true character of God dwells there in the depth of love for one another. True love takes courage and takes a lot of faith on our part. Because we have to love people whether they love us back or not. Now therein lies the greatest difficulty. Loving people and taking the chance as to whether they'll love you back or not. Has anyone ever been disappointed because you love somebody and they didn't love you back? It's a hard thing to take. So difficult. I could stay right there for 30 minutes. But it doesn't mean you stop loving. You know what I have found to be true, Sister Jamie? That if you love somebody long enough, Brother Carney, if you just love them long enough and you're consistent, and if you love people like you love the Lord, now whether they love you back or not, now you're going to have to wade through some some snares. <laughs> You're going to have to wade through some heartache sometime. You're going to have to be the bigger man or the bigger woman. But when you just continue loving, regardless of what's been said, regardless of what's been done, just keep loving. Before long, whether they really love you in the same capacity, that person will see that you're true blue, authentic, and they'll have to say, listen, I know that I haven't done right by you but you have been consistent, you have been faithful. And the one thing that I can always say for you is you have always loved me. What could be greater said, Brother Bradley, of anyone that you always showed love? You were always merciful. You were always gracious. I can't help but believe that that's just the way it is. I think love requires a lot of courage sometimes to say yes to some things. Amen. First time our kids learned to drive and they wanted to take our car out, not their car. Our car. Paid for. Baby. They won't take our car out for a drive with their friends. And you trust them to take your car, not their car, John, your car out. Oh, that kind of love requires a lot of trust. It's those times that God uses to keep us close to him, to cause us to pray more when we have to trust that kind of love. But then it takes the same amount of courage sometimes to say no. To say no. If you really love someone, sometimes you just have to say no. Now that is so incredibly unpopular to say no to the people you love. To tell them, I don't think it's best. I, you, I, I just don't think you should do that. I don't think you should go there. I don't think you should partake of that. To say no sometimes requires more courage than anything else when you love. Often today, love is just conditional. As long as everything's yes, I love you. As long as I get my way, I love you. As long as you don't cross me, I love you. As long as it, it, that, 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 that everything's going in my direction, I, I love. But you know, to be fair, 
Sometimes it takes more love to say no than it does to say yes. And sometimes when you have to be as a parent, as an individual in a relationship, when you just have to stand your ground and say no, it requires more of you than any other time. Moving right along, I'm here to tell you that true love conquers all. God's love and his grace toward each of us was truly evident. John chapter 15, verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, than the he that would lay down his life for his friends. We have heard that scripture over and over and over. And we have Calvary to be the most significant aspect to turn to. When we say, how much did Jesus Christ love you and I? He died and gave his life a ransom. He allowed the Roman soldiers to pound the spikes through his hands and his feet. When the Bible said he could have immediately called a, a legion of angels to come. And, and they could have taken him off the cross. God's love, his grace, his mercy, our example. Our example. Can you imagine your hands and feet being nailed to a cross and the whole time uttering these words, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. How many of us would have railed against our captors? How many of us would have shouted and screamed, <coughs> verbally abused those who were so malicious to us? Oh, how cunning our remarks can be when we are hurting often been said hurt people hurt people but Jesus being our ultimate example said this may be happening to me but I'm doing this for you I love you this much I'm reaching as far as I can reach the Lord said on the cross I'm reaching as far as I can reach not only am I reaching that far, but I'm willing to be nailed down at that point. Be committed. That I love you as much. You know, often you'll ask a child, how much do you love me? And they'll say, it depends on, you know, whether they, you know, if you're in favor with your child at the time. There are seasons of favor and seasons of disfavor. Don't ask your kids how much they love you right if you ground. Because there's no negative for how much they can hate. I don't know why I said all that. There were 12 disciples. We know the story. But there was one particular disciple that was called John the Beloved. John the Beloved. He was always referred to as John the Beloved. Now, what set him apart from the 11? We know Judas sold Jesus out, became a traitor, and killed himself. We know Simon denied the Lord around a campfire three times before the cock crowed the next day. We know that Matthew was a faithful follower of the Lord, wrote one of the, the Gospels, and Luke was a physician. But what in the world was different about John, the beloved? John was the only one of the 12 who died of natural causes. The other 11, Judas killed himself, and the other 10 were martyred. John, the beloved, was allowed to die of natural causes of old age. John was allowed to see heaven before any other man had ever seen it. In Revelation chapter 21, John the Beloved, who was also John who was on the Isle of Patmos, John the Revelator, he said, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. He was allowed, he was so loved, but something so amazing about him, died a natural death, was not martyred. He was so loved by Jesus that he had the moniker of the Beloved, and he, he was privileged to see heaven before any other man. Think of how amazing that was. John described heaven uh, in detail. Streets of gold, gates of pearl, and walls of jasper, and streets of translucent gold. Could it be that true love for God has its privileges? Maybe somewhere along the way the Bible doesn't tell us. But maybe there were times when the other disciples were Concerned or worried, or maybe they fled. Maybe there were times when the other disciples 
There was more than one disciple, more than Judas, who had their second thoughts about Jesus. Could it be that there were disciples that, that ran and hid when the Roman soldiers came to capture Jesus? But John stood pensively by the Lord, never saying a word, never left his side. It was always Peter, James, and John that he would call on to go and pray with him or call on them to go to the, go to the, the city and, and get meat for the disciples. It was always three trusted. Could it be that true love for God has some miraculous powerful, enigmatic privileges. If you truly stand your ground, truly love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. If you never give up, if you never give in, if you are steadfast, if you are faithful, if you don't stop trying, if you continue on, if you hold your rank in times of trouble and your love never fails, let me tell you something. There must be some rewards in heaven for that and rewards not only there, but on this earth. Some fail to love because of their hurts. Others fail to love because of their fears. I asked a few moments ago, have you ever loved before and been hurt by somebody? Or loved before and, and they didn't love you back? That hurts. Well, it's true. You fell in love with someone and you fell out. All that hurts. I understand that. First John chapter 4, verse 18 it says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment, and he that feareth not is made perfect in love. Some of us fail to love because of our fears. You know what that would be like, Brother Morrow? It'd be like having one car accident in your life and vowing you would never drive a car again. The rest of your life is going to be difficult if you make that decision that because you were involved in a collision somewhere, you made up your mind to never drive. Let's take it one step further, Brother Carney. You made up your mind that not only are you not ever going to drive a car again, but you're never going to ride in one. Now, there are people who take disappointments in life that serious. And then let's take it further than that. We're not only going to not ride, drive a car or ride in a car, we're never going to ride in any form of transportation that might have a collision. That might bump into someone else. That's buses. That's trains. That's anything that rolls on wheels. That's anything that flies in the air because you've had, heard of, of mid-air collisions. So then what happens because we make up our mind to take it not to one level, to the second, to the third level because we've been hurt, then we become a recluse. Then we become a, to no avail to anything or anyone. We're stopped dead in our tracks till we make up our mind. We're going to take the chance and love again because true love conquers all. Good. Is there anybody in here ever been that's married and ever been so mad at your wife or your husband you were just that man. <laughs> Not even looking over there. Brother Ed, praise God, you don't even have to hold your hand up. Now. <laughs> I'd be wondering about it. Well, why don't y'all put y'all's hand down? You've been so mad. Do you want to go home to mom? Oh, that's a bunch of liars in here now. <laughs> Right now, a bunch of people lying. You're so mad you want to get in the car and peel out and throw gravel all over your house. <laughs> Kelly's got both hands up the back. That's what I tell her. You're so mad you, you were going to leave and you wasn't coming back for 30 minutes. <laughs> Only to find out that Derek Queen is not open at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> But there is some ice cream in the refrigerator at home. But you ain't gonna sleep in the same bed with them. No way. No way. I'll get all my stuff off the bed and go in there and sleep on the couch for about an hour. Then I'll go in real quiet. You know what they say about grizzly bear? First of all, you want to make one mad, but after you did, you should sure want to wake them up if they go to sleep. <laughs> you started out big. You started out like you're going to throw down. I don't love you no more. And you jack, 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 
said a bunch of stuff you don't mean and you wish that God you could take back, but you can't. You can't take it back. You said it. Own it. You said it. I said it. I'm sorry, baby. If I haven't said enough that I am sorry, please, publicly, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So sorry. Please let me come back in the bedroom. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you can't have these kind of episodes and stop loving. Now you just can't allow that. You just can't allow it. You get all get all mad, get all get all Twitter painted, everything you want to do. But I'm here to tell you right now, you better come back to yourself and understand this is life is is long, it's cold, it's lonely, if you don't love. If you want to be that kind of person that don't ever love nothing, never love nobody, let me tell you something. You can be that if you want to, but you're going to be by yourself before long. And if you got that spirit and that attitude that I, you know, I love one time, you made me mad. I'll tell you right now, I ain't loving nothing but nobody here. Let me tell you something. You're going to have a long road. It's going to be hard. You're going to have to get over that. That's why the Bible said we've made over covers. Yeah. You just need to love again. I said, you just need to love again. You look at somebody that you ain't even related to and say, you need to, look, you need to love again. You need to love again. Brother Freeman, love him. That's okay. Tell him he can come back to church. <laughs> He's working. I'm just coming. <coughs> you know? <laughs> Love takes risks. <laughs> Love conquers all if you don't stop loving. You don't feel like loving all the time. You just don't. You don't there are going to be times that the last thing on your mind is loving. The Righteous Brothers wrote a song. You lost that love and feeling. Oh, that love and feeling. That's called the Righteous Brothers for a reason. You lost that love and feeling. Now it's gone. 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 Whoa, whoa, whoa. The Righteous Brothers. The saddest thing in the world when you're not loved. All of us at some point probably have experienced not being loved. I mean, that's terrible. To love somebody and they don't love you back very hard. Two, keep trying when no one else seems like they're trying as hard. But I will tell you this. Just like John, who got to see heaven ahead of everybody else, he was called the beloved. He never lost his love. He never lost his love for God. He never lost his love for the things of the Lord. He was always faithful. Brother, Brother Brad, he was always there. He was always close to the Lord. He was always within, with, within just arm's reach because the Lord kept beckoning him, kept calling him, kept asking him. He said, Peter, I want you and James and John to go and help me. I want you to go pray with me that out of the Son of Man comes. Come pray with me. Come pray that I'd have strength to face what's ahead of me. You know what? He was with arms, within arm's reach of God. And he never failed and there was some reward in that. While we are unlovable, we know that Christ paid the supreme price for you and I. While God hates sin, true love conquers all. He certainly loves the sinner. God's love for us on Calvary's cross pride open the doors of grace that we may become openly 
to receive the love of God without fear of retribution. You know what? When we come to the Lord now, Sister Pam, we can just lay it all on the line. We just say, Lord, I don't know why you love me. You know what I've done. You know where I've been. But the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Knowing our sin, knowing our shortcomings, Sister Carney, knowing when we would fail him, he knew all of that in advance. But he said, it's still, they're still worth it. You know what? If you're struggling with self-worth tonight, you are obviously shamed worth enough for Jesus to die on the cross for you. I can't help, Brother Tracy, if you were the only one that was lost, that Jesus would not have died on the cross for you. You know what? I know you just a little bit. And you're a wonderful man. But I'll tell you this. Jesus knows you inside and out. And he knew not only the man that you once were, but what you could be. And he saw your potential. And he loved you enough to die for you. Let me tell you something. How can we not love God? How can we not worship him? Somebody say amen to that. The grace of God is in, in this church. And the love of God is here. I believe there is true love for one another and there's true love to one another. We're not withholding that love. I believe when our children go to kids breaks and they come back in and we ask parents weeks later after they visited our church, hey, how, how, did, how did your children enjoy kids praise at Children's Church? And they tell you, my kids came home so excited so pumped up that they just jumped all over the car all the way home and were excited. And they were singing the, what this, this crazy song, Kids Praise, Calvary's Kids Praise. What kind of kids love Calvary's Kids Praise? And they were singing that song. I talked to a lady who visited our service just this week and she said, I don't know what happened in the back. She said, I know what happened in the front. It was amazing. She said, but I don't know what happened with my little girl at Kids Praise. She said, kids praise, kids praise. That's all she talks about. She wants to go back to kids praise. You know what? You can feel good about our kids are being loved in every square inch of this building by everyone that's here. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. While the door of grace remains open, the people of God stand by to love and support every soul that comes through these doors. Every broken heart and every wounded life whom God will send us. I believe this church will love them. So I'm going to ask you tonight, would you make a little more room in your heart for broken people to love? Would you make just a little more room in, on your docket and in your agenda to love some people that are going to need you to love them? You know what? New folks are coming through these doors every week. And they, they've already been looking for love in all the wrong places. Now they're looking for love at the foot of the cross. And they're looking for true Christians. The Bible said they were first called Christians at a city called Antioch where they just acted like Jesus. Where people acted like the Lord. The woman caught in the very act of adultery was thrown at the feet of Jesus Christ. And he simply wrote something in the sand. And they all, all of his, her accusers backed up and with stones in their hands. And Jesus said, let he that is without sin cast the first stone. The crowd, the crowd quickly dropped the stones and dispersed and they left. And Jesus said to the woman, he said, woman, where are thine accusers? Where are those that have condemned the, the word used in that phrase, condemned past tense? In the original Greek vernacular, it meant already, they have already murdered you before you got here. You were dead before you got here. That's the interpretation of that word. Where are those that have condemned thee? Already killed you. You were dead before you got here. But once you got here, grace and mercy reached out to you. And he said, neither do I condemn which was the present tense of the word. If you look that up, it seems to merely accuse. He said, neither do I merely accuse you. Man, when people, people can be cold, man. Just like that judge, jury, and executioner. They'll take up stones on you. Well, we better drop our stones. 
Is there not one of us in here worthy to cast a stone at another? I'm, I'm going to say that again. There's not one soul in this church tonight that's worthy to cast a stone at another person. We better love each other. You know what? We better love one another. We better love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. That's what the Bible says. And we better love one another because there's not one person in here qualified to take up stones against anybody else. I said, that's the truth. Jesus said that. I, I didn't make that up. He said, let he that's without sin, there had to be a massive crowd. Cast the first stone. Neither do I condemn thee. He said, honey, just, just, just go your way and sin no more. In other words, you know what you're doing. You know where you colored outside the lines. You don't have to do that again. I just want you to go and live the rest of your life. Not to die today because of mistakes you've made. Not to be condemned to death today. But to go on understanding what you were doing wrong. Just stop doing that. Go your way and send them. Boy, does the Lord love us or what? What if that were you and I? Chris, I'm talking about, you, do you understand what I'm talking about here in the Bible? About people being stoned and people being beheaded is happening to Christians right here, right now in this world. 21 Christians beheaded just this week by ISIS. 21 Christians. Do you understand all throughout the book of Revelation, it says that the Christians would be beheaded. I haven't even gone there. I haven't even got into that. It says that significant of the end times in the last days that Christians would start being beheaded. Now, it's not circumstantial that that's happening today. We got to love one another. We're going to have to support one another through some difficult times. We, we got to step, be steadfast toward one another, lift one another up, hold one another together. Hey, we better be the church today like the church has never been before. We better rise up and do what we know is right. You know, there are stoning people today just like they did in the Bible. You go on the internet tonight and see people being stoned on the internet tonight. This didn't just happen in the Bible. It's happening now. And you know what? It's not only happening in the flesh, but it's happening in the spirit. We have a little argument or we disagree or we don't favor one another or we fall out of favor with one another or fall out of love, Christian love for one another. And what do we do? We immediately take up stones. T right now, I dropped my stones a long time ago. Sister Pam, I need all the mercy I can get. I need all the grace I can get. I need all the favor I can get. I need all that I can get. I love you, church. Jesus loves us so much more. He loves us so much more. Would you stand with me for just a minute? The power of love conquers all. The power of love conquers all. Would you close your eyes for just a minute? Oh, we need the love of God in this house. We need to love one another. We need to love one another's families. We need to love one another's children. We need to love one another like Jesus loved the world. You know what? It's not a forgotten art. It's not something that was just long ago that needs to be revived. I believe it's here right now. And I believe that we ought to be mindful. We ought to care for one another, love one another, hold one another up. We ought, when one of us hurts, we should all be hurting. When one of us is blessed, we should all feel blessed. Would they sing right now? Could we see ourselves for just 30 seconds, just 30 seconds, whether we deserve the love of God or not? Could we see whether we deserve that or not? And how amazing it is that He loves us.
Somebody, our visitors and guests tonight, make them feel at home. God bless you. We love you, God. 